Behind me you can see Britain's biggest container port, Felixstowe, working away at unloading a ship full of full containers from the Far East. 90% of what we buy in Britain in shops comes in either in containers, that's mostly hardware, solid stuff, and a huge amount of it comes in in trailers on row row ferries. Uh, there are literally dozens of them coming to our country every day. And uh, that's one of those interesting things, isn't it? There's, uh, in Felixstowe, there are three row row ferries coming today, which is a total of around 450 trailer loads. That's a lot of boxes, guys. Full of food, full of drink, all kinds of stuff. A few years ago, when I was running a very large channel called Shipping TV, I was lucky enough to take a two-way trip on uh, the ferries between Felixstowe and Vladingen in Rotterdam, and I was just gobsmacked with the amount of trailers that come into this country by that relatively small route at that time. There were three ferries a day, as there are now, and each of those carried around 150 trailers inbound for the UK and 150 trailers, mostly empty, outbound for Rotterdam. All kinds of stuff comes in in those trailers, but most of it is food and drink. A large proportion of the trailers are fridge trailers as well, so that means they can keep the product chilled or cooled or whatever it needs to be. There's quite a lot of ambient cargo as well, which means that it's kind of room temperature. But in general, almost everything that comes in on those ferries in those trailers is food and drink, and it's a gobsmacking proportion of what we buy. If you start looking at the origin stickers on supermarket shelves, you'll soon understand what I mean. I just picked up some beans and uh, fine green beans and they come from Egypt. How do they get here? By ship. In the UK we make very little in the way of things that we buy all the time, like consumer electronics, things like fridges, things like TVs, things like computers and phones mostly are made in the Far East, as is a lot of furniture. Stuff comes from all over the world because we live in a global economy, and that means, bluntly, wherever they make it cheaper than we do, it comes here. The most interesting question that arises out of all this is what would we do if things went wrong? Do you remember two or three years ago there was a huge ship called the Ever Given, which got stuck in the Suez Canal? It was just there for eight days, but the uproar and the disruption to traffic, to goods coming into our country and most of Northern Europe, was colossal. Usually in that time there are many container ships arriving here from the Far East, and they didn't come. They were stuck. So what happened? Well, uh, not a great deal of food stuff, kind of products stopped appearing in shops, because that mostly originates in Northern Europe, or around the Mediterranean. But the question we have to ask is what would happen if that lasted for a few days more? If there was an obstruction to UK imports that lasted a couple of weeks, I have to tell you we'd be in a lot, a lot of trouble. The uh, ferries running to and from the continent wouldn't be coming in and out, wouldn't be bringing in the huge amounts of food and drink that we need, and we would have empty shelves. So it is a frightening thought. It's something that we and our government need to be thinking about all the time. How do we have food security? How do we have fuel security? How do we have the things we need on a constant supply and not open to disruption remarkably easily? I'm Chris. This is the Old Geezer Show. I'll see you soon.